everybody, and welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite movie review podcast, and we've got a whale of a good time for you today. That's right, the new Sadie Sink classic, <laughs> number one film of uh, the Oscars the other night. I am Simeon Jimmy, joined by special guest star Florian Himsel. Yeah, I, I definitely love this whale character. What, what a great movie. Hello, everybody. I like when he introduced himself in the narration and said, hi, my name's the whale. No, he's, he said, call me whale <laughs> instead of call me Ishmael. Uh, we also have E. Rich McCoy. Yeah, we know that uh, the whale character uses a whale profile picture on his uh, Zoom meetings <laughs> every time he goes to meet with his class. So uh, you can picture me as a giant whale uh, if you'd like. And from the movies podcast here on YouTube, we have Low Res Wonderbread. So good to be back, Mumpkey. Thank you for bringing me back on. You know, when he just mentioned the the laptop and hiding himself on Zoom, I just kept thinking to myself how he needlessly threw his laptop to end that last <laughs> call. His, his Asian slave probably could have enjoyed the free computer once he was dead. Yeah, his bitch daughter could have kept that as uh, an heirloom after the father ascended to heaven by floating at the end of the film. Spoiler alert, um, by the way. Uh, There's probably can't... so much gay porn loaded on that <laughs> that it's probably useless. That's right. It's very inappropriate. I can't believe that you guys would criticize this epic act of of saying goodbye to the world <laughs> by, by destroying his his laptop. I I thought that was. I, I'm like, man, he he really said it all. Is he is he gonna is he gonna dramatically hang up? And I was not disappointed. It was so good. Uh, I. I was shocked by my inability to take this film seriously on any level. <laughs> and I was so happy when I went to Letterboxd and every single one of my mutuals, like every single one, gave this a two-star review. I was yeah. so happy I wasn't alone. Wow. Uh, and Florian, did you take this movie seriously? Because it, it felt like a comedy to me. <laughs> well, so, wow, it's, I mean... I, I thought it was really boring at first, but then I I, I don't know the ending really touched me. I, I really I, oh I really feel God. for for this whale. Okay, well you disagree? <laughs> yeah, like this is so maudlin, so over the top, <laughs> so fucking disturbingly like wretched in in the way it depicts everything. Well, I want to uh, hear about and, that disturbingly wretched, E. Rich. Uh, you have to elaborate. Yeah, just. The I mean, like, it's the kind of thing where I, I would have way more fun with it if it wasn't just a boring chamber drama for the most part. And the, the music is incredibly overbearing throughout the entire thing. It's just you cannot take it seriously. You, you just cannot. <laughs> Uh, I think Darren Aronofsky did this ending much better in his movie The Wrestler from 2008. It's almost verb. This movie hits all the same beats, except that guy is like very muscular and Brendan Fraser is very. Fit. <laughs> Wait, does he die in some way, too? Yeah, well, if you want me to spoil it, it's the exact same way. And there, there's a descent, <laughs> wow. rather, an ascend. You know, it, it, he ends on this. this fade to white moment in so many of his movies. It's, it's very good I was plucked for this one because I had watched all of Aronofsky's movies uh, right after The Whale because I was like, where did it all go wrong? Because this guy <laughs> used to be amazing. This guy was the the, the hot new Hollywood guy. Uh, and then it all fell apart, I think, after Black Swan because then he started doing these kinds of movies. Mm. Well, isn't the well, he also did Noah, kind of which movie? is just... He also did Noah, which is batshit insane. <laughs> Yes, I I did never I had never seen that movie, and then I turned it on, and there were these CG <laughs> rock monsters. No, yes, there. the fucking rock monsters. Oh, that one! Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, that's that what was, was cool. missing from the whale was the giant CGI <laughs> rock monster. Hell yeah! Honestly, yeah, all of his movies would be improved by shoving rock monsters into them. Yeah, and the whale just gets stronger and stronger. You know, all his fat just turns to muscles, and he fights the the rock monster. It just hell. calcifies. Well, right. so now that we've all agreed that this drama that just won like best uh, dramatic acting at the Oscars, now that we all agree it's a great comedy, should we list like our top five favorite <laughs> funny scenes from the movie? Because I've got a lot of them. I should pull up my notes real quick. <laughs> I, I I think it really works as as a tragedy. I don't know. You guys are all okay. <laughs> well, a tragedy complex. is usually uh, sad at the end. Like I feel like in the the narrative thrust, like the ending is supposed to be happy, right? Usually tragedy ends. It tries to be uplifting right at the end. Mm, yeah. I mean, it, it's not that happy. I mean, he's still 
like, I mean, spoiler alert, he still murdered himself by eating all of the food in the world, you know? Like, yeah. It was, it was a movie <laughs> He's where... He's going out with a bang, dude. His, I mean, he might have fallen over onto his daughter and crushed her. We don't know what happened. <laughs> okay, how about oh, wow. this? There are, we're five minutes into this. There are probably people who have only seen this movie as the one solitary screenshot of him looking off into the distance that has been used a million times. Some <laughs> because that's might... the only thing they ever put out. It's yeah. insane. Like, so, they didn't even put a trailer out for the longest time. So in case somebody doesn't know the plot, I will briefly summarize. And again, spoiler alert. This is the story of a man who abandons his wife and child because he would rather suck some dick. Then the dick dies, so he gorges himself on mayonnaise pizza and fried chicken until his <laughs> blood pressure hits 238 over 134, and he dies. And that's the end of the film. You, I just you saved you was, two hours. Did you think it was poetic that his partner withers away from uh, age? Yes. Presumably, and so and he, he does the opposite. Up. Yeah, he's got to yeah, add on the pounds that the other guy lost. Pottery, pottery, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Florian, I mean, what, what's your still, favorite comedy scene? I mean, that was really not what the movie was about. Damn it! Okay, well, oh, then please, give me your synopsis. I mean, like, obviously, the the main thrust of the movie is that he that he is like a real piece of shit, apparently, and then his daughter has also become a real piece of shit. And and they try to reconnect, but in the end, is it enough? I mean, just just barely, I guess. But I think it was beautiful when she when she read that that essay again. I don't know; it, it uh -huh. really touched me. I don't know how you guys can't see it, but my favorite comedy scene is <laughs> it's right at the start when when it when like we have this this woman really caring for him, and then he. And, and he's like, yeah, that, that was good. And then she, and, and then like, hand me that that huge bucket of chicken. Yes. You know? <laughs> like it's, it's nurse, really. You you're not gonna stop this. You, you're gonna Hon, no, you. no, no, no. <laughs> Hong Chow is the one good performance in this movie as the the Asian nurse who's kind of like taking care of him. Well, you can say good performance. Enabling him. Yeah, yeah. You say good performance, but morale, like in terms of morality, I think this oh, character yeah. is a scumbag. No, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, wretched. it's awful. She is, she is the sister, right, of uh, his his lost love, correct? I think so. So yeah. together, they're kind of like wallowing in the grief and sadness that they they both experience this loss, and she kind of has no way to help him other than giving him the thing that fucking only perpetuates his, uh, his oh problems. i can think of a few other options e rich like uh, i don't know three little numbers on your cell phone 911 9 ambulance shows up but no when well, when you they, know for a fact that a man not work. a you, man of this blood pressure will be dead by the end of the week you do not then bring him a bucket of fried chicken that is accessory <laughs> to suicide yeah, I, mean, I mean, probably was too late at that point, but like all the chicken she brought him up till then was definitely not good. <laughs> the strain of trying to walk out of like his apartment was enough to fucking kill him. Like there's no way he would survive any trip to the hospital. I'm fairly certain. I mean, like you they would have to like medevac him with helicopters. Like There's no way they're like getting him. They have to roll him down the stairs and he'd probably fucking die. <laughs> yeah, he usually takes no, a crane. That's not the same, dude. Like, imagine lifting those those six hundred pounds or however. It's probably more. Like lifting those on those legs, your heart would explode just from that. You know how much blood you'd have to pump to to produce that kind of force. It's ridiculous. Like, would he dude, even fit out of the doorway? That's the thing. Like, getting him out is a problem. <laughs> I think the logistical nightmare of trying to take the whale anywhere is enough that... Uh, yeah, back like, in what the 90s, I, I think Gilbert Grape's mom was only like 240 pounds back then. And they had to <laughs> cut a whole... Like, the whole house was ripped up to get her out of there. So, yeah, the whale's they not going anywhere. Like, they have those like 800 pound life uh, shows on TLC and stuff like that. I really wonder how they like... Do they, do they get helicopters? Do, like, how do they? How do they do it? Well, they usually, when they want, in my six hundred pound life, when they want to go see Doctor No, uh, they usually just have this fat fuck lay like in the trunk of a car, and they drive them across the country. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but that doesn't include going downstairs. I'd assume he has like. I think it's only ramps for these people. Because he's got his fat guy yeah, wheelchair right. now. You know, hopefully there's a ramp at yeah. his apartment. Right. Uh huh. I mean, that's real shit. Did he? Did it fit through the door? I guess not. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it was probably folded up, and then she unfolded it. 
Okay, yeah. my favorite favorite scene in the movie is when the the pizza guy who has been bringing him pizza throughout the movie finally sees him <laughs> and is like shocked <laughs> and runs away. Yeah, and, like, like he's I, never I, seen a fat person before. What is the point of that? Like, what do you mean? He, he doesn't figure person. that this guy he's might be a big monster. fat recluse. Guys, wow, Florian, whale. you might not get this, but here in America, like every third person I see looks like the whale. So I don't know no, why this pizza is, man was that, shocked. That's not fucking true, dude. That's, Go to a like, Midwest Walmart, you motherfucker. You have dude, no maybe, clue. Maybe like is half a whale. I, I, I think you'd be pretty lucky to get a full whale. <laughs> yeah, that, there's guy, tons of them. I mean, there's he, at least he, four he whales in every Walmart. <laughs> yes. He, he literally can't walk like I know that's why they have those mobility that's scooters dude <laughs> I mean it, like they can't all be doing their own shopping can they if they're this big you know it, that's why when I watch my 600 pound life the, their family like the people who enable them and feed them 8,000 calories a minute uh, I almost hate them more than I hate the fat people it's really mm -hmm. close in my mind but just like the whale, they all have this trauma arc of, oh, I lost someone close to me, so I had to eat three times my body weight and fry it. <laughs> uh -huh. It's so weird. It's not even, like, ever explained. Like, it, it doesn't even look like he's he's that into food. Like He I, doesn't? I, <laughs> what do you mean? I mean he what? looked like he was orgasmically enjoying that mayonnaise pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he was just crying while doing it. I mean, he is, he is punishing himself, I believe, but, like... He, he must like it in some way. <laughs> like you don't just—it's do very that boogie two nine eight eight with the masochist. Just the, the it, its very self-inflicted pain for the sake of fetishism. You're absolutely right, E. Rich. He could just drink weight gain shake or something. Like if if he didn't care at all about it. But no, he's he's eating greasy <laughs> fried chicken and tons that? of pizza and shit like that. Uh, what made me really laugh was he Googles his uh, blood pressure and it says call 911 uh -huh. immediately and he like <laughs> defiantly starts eating chocolate bars in the face of this Google search. Oh, the other best one is when he opens up a drawer and there's like a picture bar. Uh, in <laughs> All the, his in drawers one. in the kitchen are full of candy. <laughs> he frowns, he closes the, the drawer and then opens the drawer with candy in it and then he smiles. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Now that's filmmaking. <laughs> uh, I like when his daughter, like basically everything that his daughter says is gold. Uh, she says, uh, <laughs> you're really disgusting and you'd still be disgusting if you weren't this fat. Mm -hmm. Like that's just brutal down to the soul. I mean, I, I don't really know if I if I like the fact that everyone's just shaming him for, for having like a gay lover. Like, come on, you, you really want to stay married to a gay man? Is that... Is that what your well, life is going to be about? He should be shamed for abandoning his wife and daughter for the gay man. Like, there, there's a way to work that out. I mean, he tried to get back into her life, but she refused. Yeah, I, I think there's ways. I think he could well, have either ways. handled it better. No, no, no. Like, he could have handled it better initially or, uh, you know, find a way. Keep trying. No, dude, you, you can't say he could have, should have handled it better initially. Come on, dude. It's a, it's a movie. You're going to gonna start off with a really bad situation but like you, you're gonna be able to make a redemption somehow come on this was he only abandoned her for a few years and then when he tried to come back like he didn't have custody he didn't have anything like you, you think he should just bother her didn't he already get the police called on him for that like hmm. it's not fair is that an element okay? i don't i don't remember restraining order I, in place i mean he keep, whale. I mean, he keeps saying I, I could get in trouble for calling her. Well, like, the mom does get really that? mad when she finds out that they've been seeing each other. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. We brought up the mom. The mom is one of the, the worst performances oh. I've seen in a film in a Holy long wow. time. I totally agree. You know, they, they keep doing this thing in the, the whale that feels very theater kid where someone says something really mean and then they, uh -huh. they storm to the door and then they stop and they think <laughs> they about stop. it. Like, yeah. Every character in this movie does that at least twice. Yeah, and then they've got two more monologues in them so they stick around and uh -huh. <laughs> say something else. <laughs> like, it, it is so clearly based on a play, right? This, this movie is started as a play and they decided to make it into a movie it's like mostly in it or it's entirely in his apartment right they yeah. don't really mm -hmm. leave at all yeah, so can't leave like it, it does not strike me as theatrical really the only theatrical part is the makeup uh used to turn brendan fraser into a 
giant fat guy. <laughs> Did you guys think that was good? Because I'll tell you what, anytime we saw the full body, I was like, there's not enough dead skin on this fat person. Mm -hmm. You see mm -hmm. any real fat person, they have like a really disgusting, like folded up ball sack kind of stomach. <laughs> um, and yeah. he didn't have that. He had like a clean, uh, dead skinless body. There was no gray. There was no gray on the elbows. He wasn't that. I mean, he was big, but he wasn't like. Yeah. Uh, well, I he's too like smooth. <laughs> yes. I, I understand. He should be lumpier. He's, he's a whale. Okay. I, I think he just. <laughs> I, I think his weight just exploded, okay? I think he's not like one of those w whales that were always whales. I think he, he just lately blossomed into this, this magnificent form, okay? So it's ex it's okay that he, he didn't have all those those horrible conditions, even though he says, like, apparently his back has some, some rotten skin. I guess, guess we never see that, huh? <laughs> yeah, he does say, oh, there was a brown thing on my back and it, like, dried up and fell off or something. I don't know. He said something <laughs> pretty fucked up. It's probably some shit. shit. <laughs> he just left the chocolate bar back there. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Could be. So uh, in in the opening when he's doing his Zoom class because he's the professor online and he always leaves his webcam off and then the very next scene he's masturbating to gay porn was anybody <laughs> else hoping that this is going to lead to he accidentally turns on his webcam during class and they see him like shirtless and disgusting <laughs> with his dick out <laughs> like I was praying that, be... that that's where what it was leading to for like the ultimate cringe scene but uh, I mean, that's not nobody what happened. has seen that dick for a while, so that probably couldn't have happened. But still, yeah, like, I, I wanted him to accidentally be. have his camera come on <laughs> while he's disgusting and shirtless, but <laughs> instead he just decided to reveal himself before destroying his laptop. Well, and he is revealed in social media. There's a social media post that Sadie Sink puts up. Well, that's on that her is... private Facebook that no, has zero I likes. I know, I know. Yeah, it, it, that's the funniest part is that nobody really sees it because she's yeah. a dejected teen that uh, yeah nobody cares for. <laughs> Mm. Which uh, I'm not so even strange. upset about what she like. She posts a picture of her 600 pound dad and says there will be a grease fire in hell when he dies. And <laughs> and I, I was really thinking about this because when it's revealed to Brendan Fraser, he does not seem like really that offended or betrayed. He's like, you know what? She's like a creative writer and that's a pretty good burn. <laughs> and I have really felt the same way. Like that is a great attitude to have in this situation. That is a you know, you creatively got me. Good for you. Because it's not like she's wrong. He is a fat, fat fuck. Yeah, I do think besides the binge eating, the cheating on his wife, the the uh, completely hiding yourself from society, he has he has an all right worldview uh, overall. But it's just there's not enough here for a movie for me to like care about. And all of the drama is so overplayed and overwrought. It's just not worth not worth the time. It's not dynamic enough for certain. Um, and, you know, I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with, like, one setting location films or, uh, you know, adaptations of plays often to the medium. Like, um, William Friedkin's The Boys in the Band, I think, is a pretty good example mm -hmm. of how you can make one location look um, uh, more interesting, I guess, and, and mm -hmm. not feel like one location throughout the duration of, of one piece. And they failed here. I don't, I, I, I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's just that we were so confined to the living room. And it became how, stagnant. How did they do it? How did right. they, what, what tricks did they use to make that happen? Well, I, I think it was just a matter of like the New York apartment that they were using had a lot of different rooms to it. And you didn't have that with the whale. You didn't have that, that visual diversity in place. Um, Hell, the movie Locke is just Tom Hardy in a car talking. And it's way more dynamic than this. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would actually, I would agree with that. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think... You feel the weight of uh, Brendan Fraser just being stuck on that couch, and it really starts to get grating around like the 40, 50 minute mark. Mm -hmm. For me, anyway. That's clearly no, a point. Like, it's clearly done this way to, to show that he really doesn't get around. He really is just in that spot the entire time, and there's nothing that can help him from that, you know? Do we think Except this was a COVID-inspired movie? Because really, weren't we all <laughs> living like the whale there for a little bit? <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's like no reference to it or anything. I I don't think so. Hmm. You know, someone no, no, told no. me this movie was about being fat in Trump's America. <laughs> and I entered with that mentality. I, I don't I don't know where the Trump element came. Did hmm. I miss a Trump? Well, element? Let's try to dissect that ourselves and see if we can figure that one out. 
there is a very minor political thing in, in the movie, right? Where he's like following elections or he's something. He's just watching right? the 2016 election on TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See, yeah. I missed that, and I was completely unsure what time period this is even in, because he's like, I mean, this could be any time. This could have been 100 years ago. Well, Facebook's not. in the movie. Yeah, okay, Ooh. damn. I guess it could have been 20 years ago. Mm, no. No, you're right. <laughs> it's probably 2016. <laughs> Or 2015, maybe I don't know. Around there. Mm. Apparently, the old, the, the the fattest man that ever lived uh, died 40 years ago. I'm surprised they haven't surpassed him yet. How is that possible? Yeah, they need to make a biopic immediately. <laughs> yeah, I mean they pro they must have done by now, right? <laughs> World's fattest man, the movie. That's basically yeah, what we just watched. <laughs> uh, okay, there's more funny scenes we need to tell people about, like when his daughter is being a bitch and she says, okay, you want my love and attention? Stand up and walk to me right now without your walker. So he like leans on his end table and just like completely destroys it and falls on the ground. They have like, <laughs> like comedy cartoon sound effects of the table breaking. It is just a flawless piece of comedy. And uh, one of the many times I actually laughed out loud during the movie. <laughs> you kind of can't help but do that. Like the the theater I saw it in, which was fairly well attended, which shocked me. Oh, uh, I, I would have gotten in trouble if I saw this in a theater. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess there was enough buzz around Brendan Fraser's performance that people were really like psyched to see this. Did but you guys like, think it was I, that good? No. No. <laughs> no. God, I if I saw it, this in the yeah. cinema, it would be so disappointing. Like, it's so much better on a small screen. But what were you saying, E. Rich? I was just bored throughout, and like the only entertainment I could get was kind of like giggling at how over the top a lot of the stuff was. Mm -hmm. But everyone around me was like just taking it in. They were just like here to see a sad, like, oh look at look at the big fat guy, look at his problems kind of movie. And yeah, it, w it was not like a Rocky Horror thing where I could <laughs> make fun of it and throw trash at the screen and stuff like that. So <laughs> what, what did Loras want to say? No, I just, I, you know, obviously it was a big moment when Brendan Fraser won Best Actor at the Academy Awards here. And I don't mm -hmm. think his, I don't think his performance was that impressive. Was no, Austin no, Butler no. robbed? That's my question. He absolutely was robbed. I've been getting so much wow. flack too for saying that. This when he won every other award. Like that's an unpopular mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. Uh, you know, Austin Butler wore a fat suit and made it so much, <laughs> so much better, so much sexier. Really. Um, yeah. No, I, I think Brendan Fraser gave a very mid performance here, and Jesus. you know, just throwing on a fat suit. I don't think that qualifies as as being, uh, you know, the top front runner guy to win best actor at the Academy Awards. And I, I, he didn't he just didn't do enough for me. No, this is one of those like we're patting him on the back for for keeping keeping in the industry for this long. Isn't that uh, what all of the uh, acting awards were at the Oscars? Wasn't it like all people who, oh, it's finally your time after all these yeah, years. They no, contend, they don't yeah. do that. I'll tell you what, look. Didn't the they, wrestler, but th that's what they did Mickey this year, Moore. though, because those two Asian he people did. who won. It, yes, that in the case of uh, what's his name, Data from the Goonies. Yeah, absolutely, they did. He Key quit acting Kwan for like twenty five years. Yes, yeah. um, but they didn't do it in the in any time I've wanted them to do it anyway. Mick <laughs> Moore, yeah. Michael Keaton. They said no. We're going to go with the young guy. We're going to go with uh, who is it? Eddie Redmayne. We're going to go with, uh, he yeah. wasn't really young, but Sean Penn, he was playing gay for milk or something. I, <laughs> I was glad when um, they did it for Leo so that we could stop getting credit begging Leo to win an Oscar yeah. every year. <laughs> the Legacy Award. Yeah. yeah. And he, he didn't won even, for Revenant, but he should have won for other things, I thought. I, I would have so gave too. it to him for Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 Well, I don't really know if, if he deserves this, this Oscar, but I, I think you guys are, are really underselling like this movie as a whole. I, to me, when he when he falls on, on that couch, <laughs> I, I, I really felt the pain that the whale was experiencing. Felt the pain I, of the couch getting <laughs> smashed? I mean, no, like imagine imagine you, you are 600 pounds and then like you have, you fall onto a table that then gets destroyed like under your body. Can you imagine how that hurts? It would not hurt. Your body is protected by two thick feet of cushion and like sitting down, <laughs> you would never feel pain. Like I think these people always feel like they're surrounded by pillows. Am I wrong, E. Rich? Uh, no, I have tons of pillows around me currently. I mean, like, is your ass like so thick and juicy and fat that it just feels pleasurable to sit on? <laughs> Wait, does it feel pleasurable to sit on seats? 
Well, because That's over here, I'm, I'm such a skinny little white boy that like my my ass is so bony, my bones bony can feel the seat yeah. I'm sitting on right now, and it hurts. <laughs> so I don't know. You know I, I, I wish I was thick and fat. Uncomfortable seating arrangements. So hmm. I would imagine you don't feel anything because the circulation is probably so poor, <laughs> so bad. cut off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's all terrible. Like you, you realize that this fat is probably like crushing your bones and shit. Like you can break your your ribs just by being that fat. It's it's really dangerous, you know. And you really feel the pain when he's having that heart attack or when he's choking and like. I can't believe you guys are just laughing at that. Well, it's, Florian, let honestly, me rephrase it for you. Let me recontextualize this. What if this was a serious drama about a man who feels compelled to punch himself in the nuts every 20 minutes? <laughs> that's literally what the film is. Like, he's doing this to himself, and that's why it's funny. Nobody's well, forcing I've, him to do this. I mean, that's not entirely true, because... I, that's like, the way I see it, and that's the way I, I laughed at it. No, you, you, can, you can stop punching yourself in the nuts immediately. You, you can stop eating fried chicken and mayonnaise pizza at any time! Just No, this stop guy could not it. lose weight in, in under 20 years, okay? There's no fucking way this guy could have a normal life unless he loses weight for 20 years, okay? It's not true. There, there are episodes of 600 yeah. Pound Life with successful people who got the surgery, they did the weight loss, and they stuck with it. And now they're looking better than me. Yeah, he, he just needs the willpower to do it, and he doesn't have that. He's trying to eat himself into an early grave. I mean, most of those people die on that show. I mean, gain their weight back. Oh, yeah, because, wait, what? Well, because they, they lack die? willpower. No, they gain the weight back. It's not sustainable. Like, you're just going to get the yo-yo effect. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know, I guess. I, I mean, mean any addiction a can be overcome. You know, it's not easy, but it can be done. I mean, it's extremely hard, especially if, if it hangs to your body the entire Especially time. when food is so delicious. I mean, <laughs> that too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I definitely want to lose weight just uh, just now. After like, watching this movie? I had the opposite. This movie actually made me kind of hungry. I was like, oh man, he's making food look really good right you now. Should've, you should have found a way to get a pizza delivered to the theater while watching it. So, like You're watching this guy fucking like drown himself in pizza and then you get a pizza delivered to the theater. <laughs> you could bring your own that ranch cool. bottle for it as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, all right, all right. So, so this movie is about the whale, but it's more about the daughter of the whale, really. So, so what did you guys think of of the drama between these two characters? Damn, daughter of the whale sounds like the sequel to this. Where she <laughs> <gets it. laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you imagine this actress being a whale? Oh my god, that. Would oh be god. <laughs> I guess you'd have to, to to chub up and then also wear a fat suit. The final season like of that. Stranger Things, like her character just got really, really fucking fat. <laughs> oh, well, God. the second one could be about body positivity. It could be that she's like a, a social justice uh, crusader who's like, everyone should value their bodies. And mine <laughs> yeah. is 500 pounds. <laughs> You know, they should have done somebody. Somebody should have done method acting for this movie and gotten fat. That's what they used to do in the good old days. You now know, Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis would put on the three hundred fifty pounds or whatever it would be to 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 take on the the role of the whale. I remember when this movie, like the word of it, very very first came out. I swear there was a huge contingent of people who thought Brendan Fraser had actually let himself go that much, and that this was his <laughs> comeback movie, and that he somehow then lost all the weight for the premiere. Like, I, I saw <laughs> discussions of this, like, wow, I can't believe he did that. And then it turns wow. out he was, like, not even fat at all. People are really dumb. Yeah, no, it was... Uh, <laughs> did you guys see all the discourse of people genuinely upset that they did not cast the real 600-pound actor for the movie? Like, people who do not understand that that actor would have died during the process mm -hmm. of filmmaking. I mean, we all know and can name a couple of 600-pound actors. I think we can <laughs> yes. all start. <laughs> they could have cast Roseanne Barr as the <laughs> I mean, she couldn't still walk, right? <laughs> Pretty. And now with all that sleeping medicine. That. Yeah. How is that what happens? <laughs> uh, who could they even really fit into that cat? Who would be like the closest thing? Like, uh, I mean, no one's, n none of the fat guys are really that fat yeah, anymore. Yeah, John Wasn't Goodman used to be giant, but he yeah, lost some weight. He would have been the pick in the early 90s for sure. You could go... Yeah. You know, you could go Jonah Hill, but he's like trying to be cool now. He's trying to be DiCaprio now. He's got the Socrates beard. beard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, James Corden, I think that was a version of this movie that almost happened. That's just his life right now. Now I think his shit's getting shit canned. 
Uh, Keenan Thompson. Finally. All right. Uh, Keenan's not even fat, really. <laughs> so John Goodman. Matt Albert. How, John how Goodman is, is much skinnier now. How fat is Paul Blart now? Is he still fat? Yeah, Kevin James would have made this movie a lot better, and I think he also yeah, would have won the Oscar. Sure, yeah. He could have gave Honestly, it an equal performance. A dramatic turn for Kevin James might have worked for me. Yeah, I, I think he could have nailed it. I mean, yeah. Paul Paul Blart was pretty dramatic at times, you know. He's probably got the range already. Yeah, he was snubbed for the Oscar on Paul Blart. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Ebert liked that movie. Ebert said something like, uh, the fat guy finally wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, Not hopefully he didn't watch the sequel because they undo all the goodwill uh, in the first five minutes. <laughs> I think he was Ebert's dead like, by then. I think uh, he lost his jaw by then. He lost his appetite for Paul Blart. <laughs> Damn. E Ebert was like, oh, I've been watching fat guys eat shit for my entire career. <laughs> finally, we have one that actually uh, succeeds. Uh, Sadie Sink says that Walt Whitman was a worthless 19th century faggot, which I thought was interesting mm -hmm. to say to your gay dad. Yeah. <laughs> Just dropping the F slur to your... Oh, that's fine. <laughs> hey, when you're right, you're right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of Walt Whitman, so maybe she is right. He, you know what, the whale would have appreciated that because she at least knows enough about his uh, writings that, that he was probably... Uh... Well, and and she was being honest, and his main thing is uh, just write what you honestly believe instead of writing yeah, an essay. Yeah, that's his last fucking assignment for the his class is get, tell me something real, write something honest. Wh what what even are the responses? It's all fucking dumb shit. It's all just like, <laughs> I don't want to be here. And he's like, finally, someone is telling me what's real. That's not even good <laughs> advice for community it's, college or whatever the hell he's No, it's is. not! <laughs> uh, he's a bad teacher yeah I watched this back to back with the premiere of the new Bob Odenkirk show uh, Lucky Hank and that's also about like a college professor like an English professor who hates it and he's giving speeches to his class and uh, it was weird watching these back to back because the whale is truly the far inferior teacher and uh, Lucky Hank basically gets fired in episode one so that's that's how bad the whale is wow Go check out Lucky Hank, everybody. That's my recommendation of the day. I'm, I'm oh, wow. excited for that, but you just spoiled it for me, didn't you? you well, is that the, oh, no, what, the, the first the episode? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm not going to unspoil it for you, but don't worry, you're not too spoiled. <laughs> I think he gets his job back and becomes, what was that teacher award they used to give out in the 90s? They, they put it on like Disney Channel and stuff. I think it was just America's Best Teacher. I think that's where uh, Lucky <laughs> Hank is going. As, as part of that award, they put you on the space shuttle and then... Uh... That didn't oh, work the out Challenger? So the Challenger. <laughs> <laughs> well, Walter White never got his teaching job back, right? So I don't and know. He had better things to do, I think. Yeah. I, I don't know what Lucky Hank does. Does he have better things? Do you want me to spoil that he gets his position as <laughs> department head of chair back at the end of the episode? Or well, in the first alert? episode already? Wow, what an arc. Yeah, who, who knows what the next seven will reveal. Uh, do we have any other thoughts <laughs> on the whale? <laughs> Uh, it's bad. I couldn't believe that Darren Aronofsky fell off so hard. I don't know. I, I, It's very depressing to me that this guy, he had such fire with his career, and he seems to be really hung up on doing these... I mean, I guess it's better than doing his, like, pseudo-religious movies with Mother and Noah, and... I, I don't know. I think this melodramatic shit does not work for Aronofsky. Here's the thing. I go to bat for Aronofsky for the most part because I thought like there were legitimately well-directed, well-done sequences in Mother that got me going. It like got me tense and like I, I didn't want to look at the screen anymore because I was just so freaked out by what I was seeing. When, it, when there's all those people in the in the house just destroying it and she's like trying to tell people, get the fuck out of here. You're you're breaking everything like it's a well done there are well done parts of that movie I was, it, it, it is successful it you feel the emotion yeah. that the director intends for you to feel during mother and i think he failed in the whale because i felt yeah. the exact opposite of what he intended it's a whale of a fail, a That's fail right. of a whale. <laughs> i'm giving this oh, one a I, w but not the good kind oh well, <laughs> i think i think you guys should should, should look inward okay i, th I think the fact that <laughs> But this movie doesn't doesn't if 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 it doesn't elicit any emotions in you is is probably because oh I was like very family. emotional <laughs> but it was emotions of laughter and and glee and joy <laughs> watching him eat his food 
Yeah, see, that's that's pretty bad. He, you, you hate the fat people. Well, so you, I mean, do you not criticize his enablers here? Like, all I'm doing is enabling yeah. his lifestyle by saying it brings me pleasure. I'm not the one handing him the fried chicken. I mean, like, you who's the real feel, monster here? <laughs> the whale or oh, the whale's monster? About, I mean, we didn't even talk about the religious kid. Oh, oh yeah. what a useless character! <laughs> what, an, what an annoyance, too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he useless. was less annoying than the daughter, but I guess she was obviously important. Erich, right. tell me, oh, what yeah, was I the like point him. of the religious kid? What was Aronofsky um, trying to tell us with this character? I think it's kind of like pushing, I don't know, pushing him to be more open. I, I, I don't fucking know. I think it was just exposition. It was, hey, we got to fill in the backstory. Yeah. How can we do that? Oh, this kid. This kid will open a couple of doors for us to talk about. Uh, the the boyfriend dying and this and that right, in the church. Right. Oh man, I'm depressed. <laughs> Why? I thought <laughs> just I, thinking I, about this movie and how bad it was and how I wasted yeah. two hours of my life watching it. And Florian's on here defending it. I mean, I do uh, not regret my time at all. I'm actually going to give this a recommendation <laughs> to the audience. <laughs> I, wow. I think they should see this movie and make their own decision <laughs> and see if they agree with me that it's very funny. I mean, it, this is this is really bizarre to me. Are you are you saying that this movie actually has this much comedy value that that it's it that it beats like an outright comedy? I legitimately am convinced that this is the opposite situation of The Room where they made a comedy movie and then everybody took it seriously as a drama. So now they're backpedaling and pretending they always intended it to be that way. Uh, that's how I feel. That's the impression the movie gave me. It, it actually begged me to take that away from it. Wait, so... Right. Wait, was The Room intended to be a comedy? The Room was intended to be a drama that Tommy Wiseau got embarrassed by and then said, no, it was always a comedy. <laughs> I see. Okay. Wait, so you think this is exactly like that? This is then? the... It's like the reversal. The yeah. Wait, how is it a reversal? This because is in, drama it, from comedy to drama, drama and from drama to comedy, Florian. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Have you have you guys ever seen the photos of the the whale play by any chance? No, no, no I haven't. W was the makeup better? No, definitely not. I mean, it's worth uh -huh. googling because they literally just get like a skinny actor and then stuff his shirt full of uh, <laughs> pillows God. and stuff, so it looks ridiculous. So it's like a so two hundred and fifty pound head. fat guy instead of eight hundred. More or less, yeah. Oh, that's hilarious! They should have done that with Brendan Fraser. <laughs> they should have just stuffed a bunch of pillows in him. <laughs> so he's just like the debilitating weight is really not that bad at all. No. <laughs> he's just Maybe being like a, a, a come forth drama a little queen. easier. Yeah. Yeah. This is so bad. Holy shit. The movie would have been so much more entertaining if it looked more like that. Well, maybe wow. should we give our final thoughts then cuz Florian, you need to defend this from all of our hatred right now. Uh, oh, yeah. wow. Okay, we, we just see a set photo. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. No, that guy's so kind of fat. He's got yeah. some real fat Th in his this face. This guy's not not the worst example of that. I've seen like four or five different actors wearing wow. the fat suit, and this is one of the better ones because he's got an actual fat face, you know, yeah. so he yeah. just tells it a little better. Yeah, I could play this character. <laughs> 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 how much food would he eat in preparation? Uh, how much fun did Brendan Fraser have filming the scenes when he's gorging on food, dude? Like, he's actually shoving chocolate bar after chocolate bar into his mouth <laughs> in one continuous take. Hopefully they had to do like eight different shots of it so he's just eating fucking 50 candies that day. <laughs> that, like, oh, that would be a fun day on set for me. Well, he just had to ace it the first time, you know? Now I would fuck it up on purpose. Like, hey, uh, Darren, bring me some more candy. We gotta do that one again. <laughs> I'm really uh, growing into this costume. Yes. This one just looks like an inflation fetish you'd see on uh -huh. uh, or something. <laughs> this one's not good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, his I, couch I, is being held up with cinder blocks in this photo. <laughs> uh, Wait, you know, I don't... I, I'm conflicted about this movie because on one hand, I think... I think it's a disappointment, but I can't tell if it's a disappointment just because I expect more from Aronofsky. And I think I I, I like most of the cast on on paper, and uh, it just came across very theater kiddish in, a, in yeah. the worst way imaginable. So I don't I don't know if I would recommend it, but I would recommend it to like your average movie viewer. Like if you're just like a 40 year old mom looking for something to watch on Netflix or streaming, you'd probably get something out of this. 
Um, my final thoughts, there is only one whale that I recognize in 2022. His name was Pyakan. He is an outcast of the Tolkien <laughs> tribes on Pandora. Um, he unfortunately was was thrown out of his people for... Uh, for attacking the sky people and you know the Tolkien they do not uh, they do not allow such things so they they threw him out and excommunicated him Eurich I he, do uh, not see you <laughs> he fortunately was able to uh, create a alliance with uh, one of the Navi children no, of not- Jake Sully and, it's uh, not fair, okay? We, we, this whale here, he's out of water. He, he doesn't have the ability to, to swim around and attack the sky <laughs> people, okay? <laughs> Are you saying if Brendan Fraser had jumped out at the end of Avatar 2 and uh, destroyed that Australian guy's boat? Uh, yeah, that would Brendan better. Fraser rips that guy's arm off. <laughs> yeah, everyone wants an action adaptation, yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need. Florian, I, I don't agree with anything you said this episode, but uh, I do see you. Well, I think wow. I, at the end of this now, I should explain to Florian that uh, the whale is actually not referring to the fat man in the movie, but uh, the whale from <laughs> uh, Moby Dick. Uh, yes. it's, it's a metaphor for obsession, uh, Florian. He's not actually called the whale. Oh, he's <laughs> quite quite a whale. I don't know. <laughs> Which, it's, during it's the it. Oscars, did you guys hear like they, they refer yes. to the character yes. as the whale? <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, these are the makeup team that transformed Brendan Fraser into the whale. <laughs> into the whale. I was like, wait, and, what? I mean, I think they had to. The creatives had to this. clarify at some point, like, oh, he is not the whale. It's like it's it's a metaphor, and then it's just hilarious that the the makeup people were referring to. Him. Oh, so <laughs> no, great. you guys misunderstand. Okay, the metaphor is fine, but he is obviously the whale. I don't know how how you can possibly miss this forest for the trees. No, he because is Ishmael whale. is dead. He's so incredibly dedicated and obsessed with catching the whale, in the same way that Brendan Fraser is obsessed with eating this fucking food. So really, I think. The whale for him is, is it the food or is it the AIDS dead boy? I think it's his daughter. Mm, well, I, yeah, I guess so. It, there's a lot of different whales in his life, but I don't think it's supposed to be <laughs> there him. There are many whales. <laughs> I mean, you can't possibly believe that he would have chosen the whale if it weren't a reference to his fat. Like, how how could you possibly get that idea? Because they talk about that. Moby Dick in every there's, single there's scene of the film. Yeah, yeah, it's got a double meaning. Like, there's no yeah. reason why he would have... He could have picked literally anything else. And he's a whale who picked the whale. What a coincidence. <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's not an everyday common vernacular to call fat people whales, Florian. Yeah. Look at that whale. Yeah, it's, like, it's not something we do. Wow. Look, he's uh, just a, a literally prof- a literary professor who, who just identifies with the whale. Okay, he is just out there trying to be gay in the ocean, but then he, he just gets hunted. All right, it's it's just not fair. Well, for just him. to be clear, like whales are not morbidly obese; they're just large, right? That's just how they are. Yeah. Like, so he could be right. any animal that is overeaten. Yeah, but they they just don't fit into the modern world. Okay, they just beach themselves on the. On the beaches because they they get confused by sonar. All right, it's. They it's, should make a Pokemon just... version of this called the Snorlax. <laughs> Whoa! Sure. There we go. It takes place in Johto. And he just tries to teach his his daughter how to catch the Pokemon. <laughs> yes. In, in the end, she has to catch him. It's the only way. <laughs> <laughs> they have to capture him in a ball before he dies. Mm. Well. Uh, I think well, that's uh, wrapping up our discussion of the whale. Unless anybody has any, <laughs> you know, real I, final thoughts. I'm here. joking here, okay? But I, I have like a sincere, like a sincere feeling for the whale here. Okay, he he's really. He's really fucked up his whole life, but he just wants to do one thing right in the end. And his daughter is is such a huge gaping asshole, but but he sees something in her that nobody else sees. Okay, and I think it's beautiful that. But he's just trying to to continue pushing her as long as he as he can, and I think he's left a great impression on her with, with his death. Even though, I mean, he, he he did kill himself, yes, but but he tried like to his dying breath, he tried to to instill in her the values that that he thought that she could have, and it, it was really beautiful. And I'm I'm disappointed that you guys don't see that. Okay, yeah, the the fat is ridiculous. Okay, and. And the whole situation is crazy that he would harm himself in such a way, but but he, he's really trying to make up for it in his, his dying week, you know? And I think you guys should give him some credit. No, I think we know all of that. We just find it kind of 
boring. I mean, it's definitely boring at first, but I, I really don't see how you can see that ending as boring. Like, when she's reading that essay, it, it's it's so beautiful. I don't know. I was it's thinking, very... you know, when he approached her, uh, just how disgusting it probably would have been to hug him with those sweat stains <laughs> all over his shirt. So you might be onto something. And so dangerous, too. Holy shit. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have anything you want to plug? Uh, Florian, what you got coming out on the Anti-Reviews channel next? Well, I made a, a very short like little review of The Whale, and I think it's probably my worst work yet, so I don't know if oh, you're watching it. Wow. Well, well, let's talk it through. What's so bad about it? Uh, Maybe we can improve your script right now. I mean, I already sent it off to the editor, so it's probably, it's probably not going to happen. Well, we can just I... talk about it uh, you know, in the mind space then. Uh, what's got you so down about it? Well, really, I, I I was moved by the movie, okay, but then I, I wrote half the script before I saw the movie, and it's just like... What? <laughs> it's, it's just... It, hmm. it just writes about how I wish that modern medicine would be able to, to keep fat people really healthy so they could have a fat people Olympics. <laughs> and, okay. And, I think that's good, but I, I think I really failed at defending this this great movie that that apparently the critics don't like as much as is as it because audiences. is it because you, you know? spent too much time laying out what the fat people Olympics would be? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, yeah, I I spent like half of the runtime on that, and then the end is just like <laughs> me saying that, that I found it really touching in the. End. Well, yeah. Florian, let, let me alleviate you a little bit because <laughs> right now you were just like the lone soldier in an echo chamber of hatred. You know, the three of us uh, really shit on the movie, but I don't think you're alone and don't feel self-conscious if you like the film. It's not like it's wrong to do so just because you just spent an hour talking with people who hated it. Uh, I think uh, you should take confidence in, in the work that you made. It's probably well, a I fine mean, video. Oh, well, I mean, I'm... I'm definitely proud to defend the whale because I think it's it, it deserves at least a lot more respect than than you guys would say, and I, I'm always happy to side with with an overwhelming positive reception from the audience, and that's what the channel is all about. I just feel like I should have made it longer. Maybe I should add more to it. I don't know. I think I you I'll should split. Fatten up that you video. You, yeah, <laughs> you, <laughs> you should split split off the part about fat people Olympics because that's that should be its own video. And then, <laughs> that should be a main channel video. Yeah, and then just just focus on the whale in the whale video. I mean, it, it just it goes together. Yeah, maybe you're right. <laughs> no, I, mean, I kind of want to see this uh, the schizophrenic version of the where he's just, <laughs> half the script he wrote before he watched the movie. I want to watch that version of it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I knew it was going to be a great movie, and I wasn't wrong about that, you know, but I, I I just wrote some nonsense, okay, and I thought that this would be funnier than reviewing it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like... That, that really... That tells me so much about your love for this movie, Florian, <laughs> that you were like, actually, I might not talk about the movie all that much. Hey, there's a lot of movies that, that I love that I don't talk about. I do have to make videos to at least a little entertainment, okay, so... I just was really inspired by by my idea of the Fat People Olympics, okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Erich, what would you like to plug other than the Fat People Olympics? Yeah, you can find me online uh, on Twitter at T-Z-A-R-R-E-V-A-N and Letterboxd at Riven1138. And Lores, what do you have going on other than your movie that will hopefully be out very soon, right? Uh, oh. Yes, actually, I have a version of it that's getting locked this week for nice. a set of eyes. And hopefully that set of eyes will give me at least $100,000. That's what I'm hoping for. By the oh, wow. Um, I, aside from that, you know, I've got uh, I'm actually casting a show right now. I don't know if there's a many New York listeners to, to this program, but uh, we're currently casting for Omega Fish Corp, which is going to be a series we're shooting in April. So check out ForgottenGenres.com. If you or just my Instagram, Lorez Wonderbread. Uh, if you want to be a background extra and play an office worker, or go to a hibachi place, or so I don't know. We're going in a couple of different locations, uh, so yeah, stay stay tuned for that. Uh, imagine just some casual is it Kino listener it hears this random opportunity in the whale episode, and they have their big breakout role as a background extra in the low res project, and uh, you know they make their start in Hollywood, and then during their Oscars acceptance speech for their fat 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 guy suit movie, 
they can say thank you to Low Res and Mumkey for inspiring me by making fun of the whale. It's a beautiful dream. It could absolutely happen. Yeah, we just created that possibility. Now one of you has to make it come true. Yeah, I can't believe you got such a cool opportunity going on. That's amazing. Right, Florian, if you take a plane ride to New York, I'm sure Lowrez would throw you in. He'd give you a close-up and everything. Wow. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it, Florian. Come on. Oh, I really hate traveling. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Everett, you <laughs> live in the area. Miss. Get over there. Well, anyway, uh, hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in for our whale of a good time, I suppose. Uh, Low Res, thanks for hopping on with us. Uh, I really wanted to get you on after I watched your... You and Hans posted a clip saying Brendan Fraser didn't deserve the Oscar. And I, I mean, I agreed with it, obviously, and I thought the clip was particularly funny. But then reading the comments, it looks like you might have lost, uh, you know, you posted cringe and lost subscribers. So oh, I yeah, I certainly did. On Facebook, especially, I've been getting a lot of cope, cringe, seethe comments. <laughs> um, so, yeah, people are not happy with this take. They didn't like my take on everything, everywhere, all at once. They didn't like my take on The Whale or Avatar 2. These have been the three really? uh, uh, shadows cast over me. They're they ruining your life. Out. They you are. didn't anticipate the broad appeal of the whale. I, no. <laughs> wow, we got to end it with that great banger, huh? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Subscribe. <laughs>